All right, guys, welcome back. If you've been here before, of course, if you've never been here, it's good to see you. All right, so here's the short of it. I traded the Nikon D850, technically I sold it, went out the very next day, overnighted myself a Nikon Z6. Let me go get it. Here it is, the Nikon Z6 II, version two. So, at the time I thought, this is a great idea. This is wonderful. This is exactly what I need to be doing. Um, yeah, ideas are always great when you have them initially. So let's talk about what happened. I, uh, I struggled with the Nikon D850 when it came to video. I used to be exclusively a photographer and you can watch my video. I'll put a link up there. The Nikon D850 is incredible for photography, not exactly great for videography. It's cumbersome. The autofocus is garbage when you go into video mode. I just didn't like it. I did not like it. And if I'm just posting pictures on Instagram or I'm making some pictures that hang on the wall, Nikon D850, fantastic. But if you're trying to have two cameras recording at the same time, trying to get multiple angles, uh, the D850 is just not reliable. I couldn't rely on it as even a vlogging camera to hold focus on me while I was talking into it. So I had to make a choice. I didn't have the money to slap down for a new camera without getting rid of the Nikon D850. So. Here we are, this, that's the choice I had to make. So, got the Nikon Z6 version two, downloaded all the newest software for it. Let's talk about how it performs. Okay, the big reason I bought the camera was for the video. Let's talk about it first, let's get it out of the way. 4K, 24, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. The 60 frames per second does crop in a little bit. That doesn't bother me at all. The fact is I really don't even shoot in 60 frames per second. Uh, it does do 1080 at 124 frames per second, and you can do the in-body slowdown mode where you don't have to go into post-processing and slow down the image. I didn't do any of that. Uh, like I said, I'm not a slow motion kind of guy. I'm shooting wildlife photography and birds. I typically don't slow them down very much. Color straight out of the camera looked fantastic. And the one thing that just took me out of the DSLR game and into the mirrorless game was the ergonomics. I talked about this a little bit in that other video, but I wanna go over it again one more time. My new practice is that I get on site, I set the camera up on the tripod and I immediately go into camera mode. I set my exposure, I set my ISO, set the aperture, and I make sure that I've got the right white balance, and then I flip it back to camera mode and I start taking my pictures. When the opportunity arises where I can take some video, I simply flip the switch. I'm already in video mode at the settings that I need. I just throw the autofocus point on the subject and I immediately start grabbing it. Here's a beautiful thing, okay? That autofocus mode is A-OK -okay in video. Uh, I would lose focus on something, I'd move it back over the subject, immediately grab focus, no problem. So video, the number one reason why I bought the camera, it works brilliantly, absolutely lovely. Uh, the, the workflow was the best I'd ever had out in the field. And uh, as a matter of fact, I came back after a couple of pretty intense days and I made a video about some bluebirds. I'll put a link to that one. I'm gonna have all kinds of links in this one. But um, just a, it, it was beautiful to be able to have both cameras that put out the same video image quality, had the same settings, and I didn't have huge problems doing all the color grading. Uh, it was just a dream workflow. Okay guys, let's talk about uh, the Z6 II as a camera. If you're a regular photographer that does weddings and portraits, I'm not gonna cover a lot of that. Uh, I, I can tell you that the autofocus mode uh, is fantastic. It tracks the eye, it does all the things that it says it does for people. But let's talk about the birds, okay? The very first day that I went out there, I struggled with birds in flight. I was missing focus one after another, and, and it was driving me absolutely nuts. Now I have to say, uh, I got in the menu, I started messing around with some things. I wasn't paying attention initially uh, to some of those autofocus modes because I hadn't been doing a lot of bird and flight photography with the Z6. Before I get too deep into the birds and flight stuff, I wanna qualify something. Your technique trumps everything. 
you have to learn to pan. You have to learn to pick up those birds in flight at the right time. You have to make sure that the sun is to your back and that target is illuminated well. The second thing is, is you have to make sure that you're using the right modes for the situation. 3D mode where you just keep this big square. There's too much going on in the background. It's just not gonna get it. Two things I saw that helped out. Uh, number one, uh, you can't do birds in flight in the regular group or dynamic mode as well as you can in the AF uh, large format. Once I switched to the AF large, I started grabbing focus a little better. The problem is, is I didn't figure that out until late in the day with the bluebirds. So the very next day I went to a site where I knew there were tons of swallows flying around and killdeer and geese and seagulls and I put it to the test. I gotta tell you, I was satisfied. I wasn't blown away. And I do have to qualify this. If I'm comparing the Z6, a, a $2,000 camera, to a $3,500 R5 or a $6,500 A1, the autofocus doesn't compare. I'm just gonna say it, it doesn't. I've used both of those cameras. I was blown away by the fact that the autofocus just grabs the subject no matter where it is in the frame. How it figures that out, I still, no one has been able to explain that to me, but with an R5 and with the Sony A1, if a bird is flying through the mountains and you throw it over in that direction, it figures out that there's a bird over there and it grabs it. That's not the case with the Z6. This is a consumer grade camera, much lower line, but if I put it in that large autofocus mode and as long as I keep that bird in that square, it tracks it absolutely perfectly. Now, does it acquire focus fast? No, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you. A lot of times it hunts before it finds it. I don't know if that was me. I don't know if that was the lens. Uh, the 600 struggled with it more when I put the 200 to 400, which this lens, the 200 to 400 VR2 is, I don't know, it's like a 2000, 14 model or something like that. Uh, much faster autofocus than the 600. It did, it did pretty good. Uh, I'll show you a few images. You know, the killdeer was to me the best shot. It grabbed it pretty quick. Uh, when the seagulls were flying over, nice and slow pace, it just grabbed focus over and over again. No problems whatsoever. Uh, the geese, of course, very slow, picked them right up. Uh, now, when it came to the small birds, it was a little more difficult. I'm going to be straightforward. I didn't have a lot of success when it came to those little barn swallows. Um, I maybe got two or three images that were acceptable. The birds were so far away though that I probably wouldn't do much with them. One thing I was very impressed with when I adjusted the uh, autofocus sensitivity a little bit, I was starting to be able to grab focus on the birds and I could even hold focus as they were passing through uh, brush and weeds and things like that. So I was quite impressed. Now, was it as good as the Nikon D850? It wasn't. I'm just gonna say it, it wasn't. Uh, but like I said in that previous video, everybody has their needs and I'm transitioning from photo to video, guys. I'm doing a lot more video, I enjoy it, and I just, that's what I bought the Nikon Z6 II for. So for wildlife and bird photography, uh, if your subjects are sitting still, they're not moving very fast, the Nikon Z6 II, bottom line, is gonna give you great images. You're not gonna have any problems. But if you're gonna try to photograph those fast, darting birds, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle a little bit. That is my absolute honest opinion. The Nikon Z6 II is not the best camera for fast, fluttering little birds in flight. Is that a deal breaker for me? No, not at all. If something comes out that's better on the Nikon platform, if the Z9 uh, becomes the, the better option for me and I'm in a position where I can buy it, um, yeah, I'll probably consider it. But it has to do great video. That's that's it. Because right now, that's where I am in my, my progression in photography. All right, so we talked about the video quality. We talked about ergonomics. Uh, we talked about image quality. We talked about the autofocus system. Oh, hold the press, guys. New battery life in the Nikon Z6. Good job, guys. That C battery, I'm telling you, lasted way longer than the B batteries that are in the old Z6. So Z6 II C batteries, way better. Cannot state that enough. Please, you know, leave some comments. I wanna hear what you have to think about this. Have you made the switch? 
from DSLR to mirrorless, what's been your experience? Uh, did you go with the Sony? Did you go with the Canon? Um, if you are in the Z6 or the Z7 platform, how have the bird and flight uh, situation has been for you. Do you have any secrets that you want to share with the rest of the guys here in the forum? Once again, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.